Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a fairly short vlog based off of a blog post which I did in September 2021 called How Not to Translate Dante. Unfortunately I've fallen further behind than I had expected in NaNoWriMo so I have to um, keep this short and not do many um, vlogs this month because I have to focus on my writing. So anyway this is about a fairly new um, translation of the Divine Comedy. The um, Paradiso hasn't come out yet but Purgatorio just came out and Inferno has been out for a while and I was just reading about it and looking at some excerpt for the translation I was really shocked by like what they like allowed to be published because this isn't just you know gently creative liberties within reason to you know enhance certain like language and images and such it's just like plain out making stuff up and putting in anachronistic 21st century references so anyway I first heard of Mary Jo Bang while researching my post on translation of the Divine Comedy but didn't include her among my list of best known editions since I'd never run across her name before while I've not read or dipped in and out of most of the translations I listed, I at least was familiar with their existence, and uh, hopefully when Black Friday has some prices going down, I do hope to get um, some more um, Dante um, translations for my collection on Amazon. And as I mentioned in that post, I personally prefer a translation done by someone with a scholarly background in a field like Dante studies, medieval history, or Italian literature, not a mere English professor or poet which of course there's nothing wrong with those people but they're just not bringing like the same like background and knowledge and interests personality and such to the table as someone like deeply immersed in th that world. Ms. Bang falls into the latter category of being a poet. Of course I I'm not saying against such people but there's an inevitable very noticeable difference in how they approach translation and supplemental material. To use another comparison, wouldn't you more trust a Bible translation by a biblical historian or religious scholar instead of someone with only surface interest in Hebrew, Greek, or the ancient world, or a translation of the Iliad by someone who's been immersed in all things ancient Greece for 20 plus years, over a poet who studied the language for a few years and nothing more, because that basically reveals they just have a kind of like a superficial passing interest in the thing instead of a deep, like making it a, a lifestyle. This is something they're studying and like patching about their entire life. Like for me, for example, I love um, body modification, um, body piercings. I've been very interested in the art, um, culture, and history of it for pretty much my entire life, even though unfortunately, like, you know, finances and like living near reputable pierces and such mean I can't have as many as I want quite yet. But it's like, you know, there's a deep interest you have, like you're genuinely attracted to this thing versus, oh, this is cool. I see my favorite celebrities are doing this, or this might be, you know, fun to do for like a cute little project. And when like I'm bored with it, I'll just move on to the next thing because, you know, you have to be deeply interested in something for the translation to speak to people and know this is for someone who has like a vested interest in this subject and is really deeply passionate and in love with the subject. I'm not a pedantic nitpicker who demands a translation be one million percent true to the absolute letter of the original. While I prefer it be as accurate and literal as possible, I have nothing against gentle creative liberties within reason. After all, that's often necessitated if the translator is using a style like blank verse or iambic pentameter, in iambic pentameter, or a certain kind of rhyme scheme, because obviously you have to fill out those um, that rhythm or the line somehow, and you can't always do that by sticking exactly to the letter of the original. And oftentimes, it can enhance the beauty or emotional impact of a passage, or just make the meaning clearer than a literal word by word rendering. Because sometimes, when you are like just literally translating it, it sounds kind of weird and confusing and dry and doesn't really give you the same like beautiful emotional intense impact as being a little bit creative with an um reason and respect for the original and obviously it does help when the translator has a note at the beginning explaining why he or she made certain decisions because even if you disagree with them or don't like them at least you can kind of try to understand the thought process that went into making such decisions but what i'm absolutely not okay with Inserting words, phrases, and entire passages not even indirectly suggested by anything in the original, especially when you do that over and over again. I was beyond gobsmacked to learn of Ms. Bang's translation of Inferno and Purgatorio, the latter of which was just recently released through um, Grey Wolf Publishing House, which I get, don't really trust them now if I, this is the kind of thing they see fit to release and approve and like do glowing reviews of. And they're full of anachronistic references and allusions to modern politics, pop culture, artists, and writers. Among many, many other things, like I've found, they she includes references to allusions, like trying to be cute to like Donald Rumsfeld, Andy Warhol, Usain Bolt, Marvin Gaye, Bob Dylan, Amy Winehouse, Gertrude Stein, South Park, Pink Floyd, Star Trek, Tootsie Fruit Shoes, 
MGM's Leo the Lion, Shakespeare, Freud, the Boy Scouts, just as like, you name it. It's just, just like, what is going on? Like, what is your thought process doing this? Oh, and she also um, describes the um, delectable mount um, Dante is trying to climb in the beginning of the poem as the lemon meringue mountain. Like, what? That's just goofy and bizarre. And she says the winds of hell are like a massive crimson camera flash. Takes extreme liberties with many other lines. And Dante also refers to um, Virgil when they first meet as Mr. Ubermensch. Like, what's going on with that? That's just stupid and goofy. Like, the famous first tercet alone is rendered as stopped mid-motion in the middle of what we call our life. I looked up and saw no sky. Only a dense cage of leaf, tree, and twig. I was lost. What? The bulk of that tercet is entirely her own imagination. Find me one other translation that strays that far from the original Italian. And I also did find um, some review has like a full translation, her translation of Canto One of Inferno, and it's actually some of it isn't pretty bad at all. It stays kind of true to the original, but it's just she just inserts in so many things that aren't in the original at all. It just doesn't feel respectful. She's trying, oh, look how fun and cutely I use language. It's one of my issues with the book seat thief. It's just like this goofy, bizarre, pretentious language trying to say, oh, look how creatively I use language. I'm so special. Everyone praise me. Look how cool and original I'm being. And he, al she also several times refers to the um, she-wolf tracing Dante as like a bitch and like talks about her um, bitch kitty face. That's just, I mean, I understand the very old translations will use the word bitch when he's referring to female dogs because that is the like, original meaning of that word. But actually using that word in a different way, in like a very like, misogynistic way. I mean, he does, there are a few lines in the Divine Comedy I would consider kind of like sexist. Obviously, they pale in comparison to everything else. They're just not really the main focus of all. But to use a word like that to describe a woman or like a female dog in a non like literal, like original sense of it referring to a dog, that's just like, doesn't feel like Dante at all. It seems so gross and disrespectful to have that kind of word in there and to say, oh, this is funny and cute. It kind of like normalizes that word as something, you know, fun and jokey, you say, instead of like in losing track of the fact that it has been, you know, made into a misogynistic slur against women. But anyway, I also read a really weird 2011 op-ed by Ms. Bang, claiming if you only read Inferno, you'll falsely think of Beatrice as a damsel in distress from the story Virgil tells in Canto II because she's tearfully pleading with him to save her friend, despite the fact that Beatrice is the one who rescues Dante. She also sets out to summon Virgil after a conference with two other women, Virgin Mary and St. Lucia. You haven't read the text thoughtfully at all, nor done any real outside study, if you truly believe Beatrice only wants Virgil to rescue Dante from the three beasts impeding him. Are you so jaded after years of English teachers over analysis that you now refuse to consider any deeper meanings for anything? I'd have zero problems with her approach if she were doing a 21st century retelling, although even then, I, unfortunately, I, this is a subject for another vlog, but I do have many issues with a lot of these um, current like reboots and retellings of classic works, and that would give her the perfect opportunity to play around with the general concept while keeping core elements of the original material. But she presents this as merely a fresh translation, not a reimagining, and a lot of the reboots, oh, I will get into this more in my um, blog and vlog here, but like they just think, oh, the, the classic novel wasn't good enough. It doesn't have any 21st century values or there's not enough like forced rainbow tribes in it, like diversity for its own sake, not because that is generally like a good character or like a natural part of thought. No, we have to check all these like woke little boxes. And the original just was like too much a product of the time, like a stupid Anne with an E, for example, or all these like woke retellings of little women and stuff. It's just boggles the mind, just... The classic was, you know, a product of its own time. Try to understand and appreciate it in, like, you know, full historical context and intent. Don't just try to, oh, make it like, oh, it's, it should be a 21st century and have these different special, like, values and things in it because that's just, it's not the original anymore. It's just you're trying to put your own woke 21st century retelling and re spin on it. And that's just unfortunate. You can't respect, like, the spirit of the original and the author's, like, intent in writing something. To make it even more shocking, the Dante Society of America, which I'm a member of, endorses this nonsense. Like, seriously, I mean, overall, I mean, the translation doesn't seem like it's, like, that bad. Like, obviously, the parts that are based on the original and not, like, being wildly, like, out of left field about things. But overall, I mean, that just makes me dock it. Many stars not want to read it at all because, like, if you can't be true to the 
original intent and you're just like basically trying to be cute and forcing in like allusions and references to things that were not part of Dante's world at all. What are you thinking? And I also read um, another little excerpt in another review where um, Francesca da Rimini in Canto Five of Inferno calls herself a bad girl that's not in the um, original Italian at all. And I don't think I've ever seen that in any other translation either. So that's just really goofy and bizarre. And I cannot recommend this translation at all. But of course, like you should, like if you're interested, you can look up some reviews of it and see some excerpts and see if that's something you might actually like, but I would not recommend it. And that's not just being purist and pedantic, as I've mentioned. I don't have really any problems with creative liberties within reason, as long as it's being, you know, respectful or perhaps to keep to a certain rhyme scheme or like blank verse and iambic pentameter or something like that. But you just ultimately have to you know, like respect what the original says and not just like force your own thing on it, because otherwise that's not like Dante's like poem anymore. That's just your own story that's kind of sort of like based on his stuff. So listen to the end. Thank you very much. I possibly might do another. I'm fairly short. I'm Dante and post turned into a vlog um, later this week or next week. But I do hope to um, start catching up on NaNoWriMo more. So that's going to be on my focus for the rest of this month. So see you guys very soon. Thanks. Bye.